What's going on everybody? How are you doing? Today here I am at the corner of Martin Luther King and Pacific Coast Highway here in Long Beach, California. I've been to this location many times. You can stay right down the street, right across this street here. That's, you can see it just behind me, that big fence is. That's Long Beach Polytechnical School. That's where Stoop Dog went to school, Cameron Diaz went to school. But right here, right here, this 7-Eleven. So I've been to this location before. I did a video about it, then I did, a, did another one I never put up. This used to be home of VIP Records. So this 7-Eleven here used to be VIP Records, which was a record store. And in the back, they had a little tiny recording studio, and that's where Snoop Dogg, Warren G, Nate Dogg, that's where they all got their start. I'm here with my buddy Jeff from 909 Adventures. What's going on, everybody? All the way from the desert, all the way down yes. to Long Beach. We travel all day, all night, just to get here. <laughs> just, just get here. It's like a two hour drive. How long was yeah, it? Yeah, it was about, uh, two, about hours. two hours. Two hours. Yeah. So you're a fan of hip hop? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, and of course the 90s hip hop. Exactly. Nate Dogg, King of the Hooks. Yes. One of the greatest uh, rap arts of all time, for sure. I mean, he was. If you were alive in the 90s, he was a guest vocalist on all the hot tracks. And this is a very special occasion. We're going to be going to visit his grave, but I want to stop here, show you where VIP Records used to be, and where it is now. Check it out, guys. So, right in the back room, there's a little room, and for 40 years, I believe, the record store was almost here. And 7-Eleven came along, and they, there was a world-famous sign for world-famous VIP Records that was right here. The city was going to take it. It's in storage now, I believe. Oh, Kelvin, the owner, has it still, but it's right up there. Music video was filmed up here. Just one of Snoop's up on top. But yeah, 7-Eleven said that they were gonna not stay here at one point and let VIP records stay. And then they were gonna give like 50 grand to the school, 7-Eleven, just to let them stay. It was a whole thing, like I went, they, just to keep the records right here. But unfortunately, it was like the mecca of G-Funk started in this building and now it's right down here i'm gonna walk right over here and show you where vip records is today okay, kelvin the owner of vip records since 1979 correct oh yeah 1979 yeah. even though vip was opened in june of 78 by my oldest brother cletus anderson who's the founder of vip uh he opened it, uh, and uh, six months later, January of 79, he sold it to me. So I've been the owner for the last 44 years. Right. And, uh, you know, I was able to survive mainly because of all of the stuff that he taught me uh, about the business. So we had a, I had a great seven year run with him. And uh, interesting 44 year run <laughs> here in the neighborhood. But- uh, And you guys are still going strong. We still here. I mean, it's been some real tough years, yeah. not just because of COVID, but because, you know, that especially kids, they feel that music is free now. So right. they don't want buy, we don't buy music, it's free. Yeah. So, uh, of course, the vinyl situation is kicked back in, and uh, they're saying the uh, uh, CD is kind of... Kind of coming back, yeah. Did you see a young lady at the door? No, I didn't. And you got a uh, large vinyl collection. Well, you know what, like I Going said, well. I just now start reordering the reissues and getting in some of the newer titles uh, as of late. But, uh, uh, yeah, we, we are rebooting and stuff because I was more, had a mindset of liquidating uh, not only my store, but the 11 other VIP stores that we have closed in recent years. Uh, but now I kind of switched gears. Uh, we're kind of on the comeback, so yeah. yeah. This is a part of VIP Records reboot to get back into the game. Now, can people buy some of this stuff online? Oh uh, yeah, we do have. Uh, we sell on Amazon, eBay. Uh, we also you can go to uh, VIPLBC.com right uh, for our website. 
Because those T-shirts with the sign, are, I have two. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're amazing. Where You have the sign still in storage, right? Last year you told you me. I have the sign in storage. Uh, and, you know, and mostly so. when someone comes to the store, that's the first thing they ask for is the sign. Yeah. Right? So, fortunately, we were able to get a replica of it made. Yeah. So people have something to, uh, you know, take pictures of or whatever. So we got a... Uh, two spots in the store that's pretty famous for photo opportunities to sign in that area right there. Of course, look yeah. at that. So, uh, but since the last time you was here, uh, this young man right here, let me show you this guy. Who's that? His name is Gibeon, and he's an R&B singer from born and raised here in Long Beach. Oh, yeah? Long Beach. Actually graduated from Poly High School. Right, right across, across the street. The street. And he, like I said, he's an R&B singer. So he dropped about three years ago. And uh, that's when I was introduced to him and started following him. But last uh, October, he came off this uh, tour. And uh, he said he wanted to do something special in his neighborhood. So his people contacted me and asked, you know, were we doing anything special that they might could assist us in? So I told him then of my goal about reopening a recording studio in the back of VIP and a couple other things so uh so you might open another recording they said, studio they said yeah they said we probably can help you so let me show you what he did yeah so you actually um the other location where the 7-eleven is that's where the original re recording that's studio the, was yeah that's where the original recording studio i know you've seen this before. Oh yeah, that was, that, this was at the front before. Yeah, this is when we was at the original building. Even though it's kind of crazy because even this building changed several times while I was there because the front door used to be on Pacific Coast Highway and then the front door moved here and then the front door moved further back. But a lot of changes. This is literally the day that we shot this new dog for the video. My name video. Yeah. Uh, he shot three videos on the roof. What's oh, my name? He shot East Side of G's Up video. He shot that on the roof. And he also shot uh, Welcome to Long Beach, uh, remake to the uh, Jermaine Dupree, Welcome to Atlanta. Wow. So he did uh, Welcome to Long Beach, and a uh, portion of that was shot on the roof. Uh, Warren G there? Yeah, that's uh, the week the Warren G Regulate album came oh, out. Oh, it's the week it came out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. The 92 riots up there, a picture of that. Um, oh, that's your sign that was right beside yeah, your store. So the, the that's run. the original store. What's burning is the building right across the street here. At the time, it was a furniture store. At Yeah, it was a furniture store that they had looted and burned down. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff burned, but the VIP, the record shop was untouched. Oh, thank goodness. And stuff. So interesting people on this this is dumb enough so i think snoop probably was the first with the, the big major deal i would say domino was second and then warren g was third and then what i'm actually going to be talking about nate dog later in the video you were you knew nate right oh yeah yeah i mean he's one of the three that you yeah, kind of two one three <laughs> yeah there it is so uh uh yeah i knew nate and stuff for the talent and stuff i mean he changed the game uh, for, you know, rap, uh, you know, his ability to take uh, profanity and, and put deliver it in a, in a manner that's so smooth to it's soothing to the ear. It's, it's pretty much <laughs> the, the smoothest sounding voice ever, I think. Yeah, yeah. What a voice so, he had. You know, it, it was kind of crazy uh, when we did the 213 demo and I shopped it all around the industry, all of the major labels and stuff I had relationship with so uh it is it's crazy that they all turned it down right they all became superstars yeah and then so uh warren took it to dre uh to a bachelor party and he heard it and uh he uh invited snoop up uh to the studio because he's working on the deep cover soundtrack right and uh once that dropped uh 187 is the song that really set him off and then uh when he his participating the participation on the chronic album just took him to the next level so that was a perfect setup for doggy style right so uh and snoop took along like warren g and nate dog right like, yeah, yeah they yeah. got famous and yeah yeah
so uh you got a new recording studio yeah you're gonna be back no, here no, the history oh rick right. james you knew did you know rick james uh, of course i know rick sure. <laughs> so okay. this time hmm. be before rap right stuff. i mean one knows such thing as rap music when when I took those pictures, so Rick James, the R&B group Switch, up there. Uh, there he is, yeah. Wow. Yeah, me with the uh, Jackson 5. What? Uh, uh, Sister Sled. You I took mean, all these pictures? I but... got tons of, uh, I got tons of pictures like this. I mean, over the years, artists didn't come out and they, if they didn't come through VIP. Right. And stuff, I'm, uh, Independent majors, I don't care. We were the go-to retail change uh, in L.A. County uh, to launch projects. So, oh, and you know, you knew, old. you knew easy. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that DJ Quick kind of got his start here. No, I didn't know that. Uh, easy. I remember Easy used to come down every Friday evening, and this low rider dropping off a uh, 12-inch vinyl. You know, we would buy a box or two. And so I, I'm the one who told him that, you know, you don't have to go from store to store. You can take it to this one-stop distributor that I buy from and, and just pick up a check every week right. and stuff, which he did. That worked out well for him. Too Short. Too Short's still going, too. Is, I was just hearing the advertising yeah. on there, but see, my story on Too Short is that he, he had two mixed tapes that went gold here at VIP before he even ever got a record deal. Wow. So, so we were selling that much of his underground music uh, that we had to go buy high-speed doubles just to keep up with demand. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cube, yeah, Dre, yeah. wow. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of history with those two guys. Yeah. We wanted the promotion that Cube did. That's actually on the back of an 18-wheeler. And it rolled through. It rolled through the parking lot center of the original store back in the day. So they was riding that up and down the street through the through the city. Crazy. So where are you gonna put the studio? Do you think? In here? Oh, look at this! Wow. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, it's already all set up. Already set up. It's so cool, man. Yeah, this is uh, man. I mean, this is. We we looking for the next superstar or superstars. Uh, Jeff, you know. is that you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't carry a tune, but we can try. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell people, you know, I can't sing, dance, play an instrument, write a song, but I can tell you when you got one. Right. I got, you got the this. year. I got that, and Ben had it. So, but uh, yeah, we uh, yeah. even though we are still looking for our own building. Uh, to uh, open this museum like situation and bring the original sign back to be the anchor and in there we will have a recording studio we will have a radio podcast area but you know we're gonna need a lot of people's support yeah to uh, make that happen well this video to, let's get people here. online shopping yeah we're gonna try to stay here in the area where the history was created but uh, if we have to move, I don't know. We might have to move to Inglewood. Well, I remember last year when I was hanging out with you here, it, it was a lot different. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah you, yeah. Did, you, this is huge. Oh wow, look at that! That's wild. So people can follow us on our social media on Instagram. It's official VIPLB. Or, uh, like I said, our website is viplbc.com. Or just, hell, pull up. <laughs> pull up, that's 20, right. 1028 East Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah. In Long you, and you have to come. If you're, if you're a oh, music yeah. fan, yeah. this is just, this is, yeah. especially with G-Funk and that era, you have to come here. Exactly. So, I tell everybody, you got to go. I know yeah. we're celebrating the 50-year history of rap. I'm a little upset over the fact that, you know, there's really not a whole lot of mention of the part that independent retail plays. Right. But we know, as far as I'm concerned, I, don't count, I don't, can't speak for the East Coast, the South, Midwest, or none of that. But for the West Coast, the early rap music was spreaded through independent retail stores. Right. 
and stuff. Because of the gang situation, these guys didn't have no freedom to pull up in different neighborhoods. You had to stay at home, right. working from home. And there uh, wasn't no internet or social media. As I think about it, you know, what's real big today uh, in this in today's world is the, the influencers. Well, I look, I've been an influencer all my life stuff yeah. spreading the word well, of course uh pushing people's project and stuff so uh you know i uh you know that's kind of the so help and support we need now we need a major influencer to come in and and, and take this thing to, to the next level, level. Yeah. back to the next back to the other back to the level not because you were you're at that next <laughs> level thank you calvin i appreciate it, my man yeah. thanks man That, man. that was really cool. This was really unexpected too. <laughs> yeah, you didn't expect I mean, that at all, right? No, not at all. That's what unexpected means. I just defined it for you. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's a nice dude, man. He's yeah. the nicest guy. Uh, every time I come here, he remembers me. He likes to talk. He's, I've asked him the same. I, I could ask him the same questions over and over again. You guys get so excited. He never gets tired of answering right. them. And you know, he's so proud of what he started here in Long Beach. He wants continuing to grow here in Long Beach. We hope. So if you want to shop VIP records, you can't get to Long Beach. Go online. I'll put a link below. In the description now, we're going to go over to Forest Lawn here in Long Beach and visit the grave of Nate Dog. All right, let's do it. is that in front of that you. That is pretty impressive. I mean, it's uh, it's something to look at, to be yeah. honest. I mean, Forest Lawn always has beautiful, beautiful murals. This is Forest uh, Lawn Long Beach, so a uh, few famous people here, but Nate Dog, I've been out here, I think this is my third time, but he has a newer headstone, apparently, and I saw it, I think, last year, but I never put the video up because I was working on other things, and I wanted to um, include some things, like stuff with uh, Kelvin. So, Let's walk over and tell you a little bit more about Nate Dog. But you know Nate Dog, shake that till I collapse. Uh, regulate, regulate was the jam. Yeah, of, it was, it of the was 90s. everywhere. Yeah, uh, everybody's stuff. Everybody. He's the king of hooks, and yeah, he is. that that voice. But I mean, we all first heard it on Regulate. If you're a '90s kid, like Regulate is probably, mm -hmm. I think the the yeah. most popular. Like every it, it crossed genres, it crossed boundaries. I should say, not genres. It was it was its own genre, G funk, but. I mean, everybody, people that listen to just pop music or country music or anything, love Regulate. You right. put that song on, everybody loves it. Yeah. And that was the song that made him, but then he collabed with, you know, 
Dre, Eminem, Snoop, everybody had his own albums. I'll tell you a little bit more about him as he walked towards his final resting place. He was known as the soul man of G-Funk. And uh, before his first album was released, he had a few huge hits with Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Soundtrack to Murder was the case regulated, as I mentioned, with Warren G. He grew up here in Long Beach and began working with Warren G in the 90s. And then they hit number two on the pop charts with Regulate. I can't believe Regulate did not hit number one. It was a soundtrack. It was on the soundtrack to Above the Rim, which is a great movie. I suggest you watch Above the Rim. So Nate and Warren G parted ways, but he uh, had a hit with Never Leave Me Alone featuring Snoop Dogg and released his debut album, G-Funk Classics Volume 1 and 2, which is exactly what the title says. Absolute classic. And I'm just trying to remember where his grave is. Could be that one with everything around it. I'm not sure. I always get confused when I'm here remembering exactly where it is, but it could be over here as well. We'll take a look. There's a pin on Find the Grave that'll take you right to the grave, so it's very easy to find. Um, but I like kind of getting the general area and then just finding myself. 2001, he released Music and Me, which is one of the greatest albums you will ever listen to, for sure. But in December, I think it was December 2007, in September 2008, he suffered two strokes that left him, one of them left him partially paralyzed. On March 15th, 2011, he died of congestive heart failure here in Long Beach. And he was only, and this is his grave right here, he was only 41 years old. And here he is. In memory of Nathaniel D. Hale, beloved son, brother, and father. Nate Dog, King of Hooks. Time does change, but the music re it remains the same. I hit him with the music from the slaves. Oh my goodness, what my ancestors gave. I don't want you to think. I don't know. They t taught me how to reach deep down and touch the soul. Without my music, where would I be? You taught me how to cry and still remain a G. You keep a lot of soldiers at ease, and together the next level proceed. My music and me, music and me, music and me, my music and me. Go together, perfect harmony. Soft and mellow or so hard it'll make your speakers explode. Stay with me and together we will live out this dream. My music and me. It ain't a hit until Nate Dogg spit. August 19th, 1969. March 15th, 2011. And his son is actually doing really well right now. Is he really? Yeah, Nate Jr. He's uh, follow, you should take a look at his Instagram, N Hale. I believe it's his uh, handle on Instagram. Yeah. No oh, yeah, he's a great musician. Sounds and looks a lot like his dad. Well, that's yeah. not a bad thing. Not at all. Look at those pictures. That's crazy because they recognize every. On right? Him. I was just thinking which which is the most iconic picture of him, but they all yeah. kind of are. They all are. G Fun Classics, Volume 1 and 2. Look at that. Got Long Beach in the background. Crazy. 41 years old. He was uh, in the Marines. I didn't know that. United States Marine Corps, yeah. It was a different headstone last time. It was a more simple one than this one. Um, they've come and put this one here for him, and it's canvas. So look for that mural. Come to the back. You can see the right there. Walk down here. There's an eight dog. Hold up. Wait. For my who be thinking we solve. We don't play. We gonna rock it till the wheels fall off. Hold up. All right, Jeff, 909. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, thanks for inviting me, man. This is really cool. I mean, I didn't ever think I'd come out to, to see this. But it was, uh, it's really cool to see that. And also to get into VIP Records and yeah. meet the man himself. I know, right? I Calvin. mean, who would have thought? Yeah. I would have I knew. I knew. I knew. <laughs> well, it's you, so. I, well, no, I knew. I know. I mean, I knew he was going to be there. He's, a, he's, he's just the man. He's amazing. Right. Yeah, this so. Is, sorry, what? No, I was just going to say, this is just really cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, Nate Dogg. We all grew up on him, and I still listen. I still listen yeah. to his stuff, yeah. his albums, and his collabs and his features. Yeah. And I mean, he was he was everywhere. Even if you didn't hear his voice, he probably worked on it. And easily the most rec. I think for hip hop and rap, I mean, one of if not the most recognizable like voices. Right. When you hear, it, you know. Right. Well, it ain't a hit until Nate Dogg spit. You hear that yep. voice. Oh Says my right god. There. I mean. The bridge or the chorus to Till I Collapse by Eminem. Till I Collapse is the number one song in terms of um, uh, for a workout. Really? For workouts, yeah. Okay. It's like for playlists. Number one, and I think, believe it's the only or one of the only songs, not just rap songs, songs to hit over a billion views on YouTube without wow. having an official music video. That's cool. they never It was never released as a single. Really? Till I Collapse. Okay. And it was one of Eminem and Nate Dogg's most popular songs. Huh. And then, of course, Chronic, 2001, he's all over that, which is yeah, one of yeah. the greatest albums ever, for sure. All right. All right. So, Jeff, your channel is 909 Adventures. Yes. I'll put a link below. You do Beautiful. all sorts of stuff I like I do. I do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I'm starting to get into uh, to Graves, so you guys will probably wind up seeing that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of abandoned places. Uh, dabble in some movie locations. Um, just a little bit of everything. A little guys. bit of everything. Yeah. And desert life. Yes. You got a lot of desert life because you yes. live up in the desert. Yep. All right, man. Thanks for inviting me again. Word. Thanks for watching, everybody. Rest in peace, Nate Dog. Peace out. Smoke weed every day.